Hi and uh, welcome back to another video. So today we'll be assembling a bronze sword. I got a blade from bronzeagefoundry.com as you can see. Uh, the blade's actually quite nicely made. Uh, so you can see it's straight. Sorry about a little bit of dog hair there. Uh, that's that's from my dog. Um, so you know there's a handle there with um, holes for your pins or rivets. What I'll be using today is uh, pins. So you can see the, the blade's rough ground. Um, might polish it later, uh, but honestly I kind of like the, the I guess the, the rough look as well. So what I'll be doing is a building handle and a scabbard for this. Uh, we are using polonia wood from Daiso. So first things first, uh, you know, we gotta get the handle measurements, and that's pretty easy to do. We're just gonna outline it using a, well, it's not a sharpie, but you know. And then cutting begins. So again, I'm sure there are easier ways to do this. Uh, this is what I had on hand. I'm working on this from uh, my tiny little backyard with a Dremel. I'm also going to assume that most of you at home don't have a full woodworking station. Uh, at home, you might have some tools at home just like I do. So I guess that's more the purpose of this video. It's more to document uh, my own process in, in learning and also maybe you can learn from some of my mistakes uh, and hopefully successes, right? So as, as shown right now, I think what I'm doing is not necessarily uh, cutting all the way. Uh, sometimes it's easier to score the wood, uh, make some cuts on both sides and then uh, make a break. We can sand it down later. So yeah, after we've got the handle out, we're just gonna check that it lines up, more or less. Um, you know, we're gonna mark the holes in. It, it doesn't have to, to be perfect, aka the edges aren't uh, perfect, we're just gonna sand them down later. Just checking that the pins fit. Uh, so this, this will be a bit of a back and forth process. Uh, no super easy way about this. Uh, I did small guide holes first uh, and then went back and changed the drill bit size appropriately to the pins. Uh, if I'm not wrong, I think this was a mixture of... Uh, no, it wasn't a mixture. I think it was 6mm? No, 4? It's been a while. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the good thing about this is that the copper pins were sent with the blade. Uh, by Bronze Age Foundry, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, the guy runs it's pretty great, so he'll send the pins along. Okay, so um, I'm gonna do some sanding and cutting and trimming here. Why? Because the blade uh, isn't exactly flat, so there's a little bit of a rise uh, near where the guard would be. Uh, not that these blades have guards, um, but yeah, there's a little bit of a swell, it's not a straight. Uh, flat line all the way so there's a little bit of a back and forth here um, near the guard area uh, try my best to try and get this to fit but since the the rise is a gentle slope and it's kind of organic um, <laughs> there's not much choice I had about this so just trying to uh, go by feel I guess uh, again I'm sure there's a much better way to do this but well, this is the first one. We're just gonna go through and learn what we can from this. Uh, yeah, and see how it goes. Okay, so, uh, first of the mistakes here, I think. So what I think I should have done is get the pins all the way through the blade. Uh, don't, don't have them too flat. Uh, I, I definitely made a mistake here. 
So the thing is, these are copper pins. They're a little bit softer. Uh, and if you hammer them, they'll, they'll bend. So there was some trial and error. Uh, if I would redo this again, I would not have done what I did. So you can see me here basically trying to uh, fix some of my mistakes. Uh, this whole section wouldn't be here if I'd done this uh, the better way, which is, you know, get your pins through the blade and then fit both sides of the wood on uh, as best you can. So, we're gonna show, I mean, if, if you attempt to fix stuff, you're gonna end up breaking. So I did break one handle. What did that mean? That meant I had to redo that entire handle. So, that's what happened off camera. Uh, as you can see, the fit isn't uh, perfect. There was more hammering after this, definitely. Uh, but at least the pins are somewhat through. I can at least trim. You can see one of the holes there uh, isn't all the way through, as I pointed out. Uh, it is in the, in the wood. Um, and we can put in a little bit of glue or Loctite or something later on. But that's totally not ideal. So what happened here is uh, I trimmed off the rest of the copper pin. You can see the little bits lying to the side over there. And then begins the whole sanding down process. Uh, so we're going to get the wood scales uh, that we've made aligned to the uh, blade handle as it is. So yeah, uh, you probably want to smooth out some of the sharp edges. That's kind of up to you guys at this point. but. Uh, you kind of want it to fit in your hand nicely. So we've um, got the handle sanded down and it's been glued in. Um, you want to make sure this is smooth, which it is um, at this point. So using, um, you know, clothes pegs to, to, I guess, secure it. You might want to get better uh, clamps, which I did later on, but uh, you know these did fine. So you've got your basic um, sword here. If uh, you know you want the basic version, this this is it. Um, obviously, some things again could be better, but this is functional. Um, excuse that horrible pin over there. There's no way I can fix it for this sword. If I make another one, we're gonna get that done. So we're just gonna get a little bit of decorative um, etching in, uh, both into the blade and ended up doing a lot more for the handle. So I think the, the I guess, purpose or look I was going for was more of a this wasn't so much a, a practical blade. Uh, I don't think I'll be using it for, for cutting or anything. It's more of a ceremonial uh, look and feel I was going for. So it's just freehanding here and jamming away. If you guys are curious as to what I'm using, it's basically a cheap um, you know, inverted comma engraver I got off um, Amazon. I'm sure you can find similar things uh, for relatively cheap. So just gonna work on the wood here. Um, it's kind of a chill and meditative process for me. So it's, it's a pattern I've used before, basically concentric circles blending to each other. And we're just gonna get this pattern generally across the handle on both sides. So I like to do this uh, both for aesthetics and a little bit of grip. But yeah, I'm doing it honestly just because I think it looks cool. 
and on to the other side. So yeah, we're gonna, I guess, uh, make a scabbard for this later on as well. And we're gonna do this pattern on the scabbard. Gonna see if we can get it to match up or, or not. And after this, to, to bring out the pattern uh, and to get it contrast, I think we're gonna torch the wood a little bit uh, as we've done in a previous video. So we're just gonna torch the wood lightly. I may have overdone it at one spot, but no worries, we can sand it lightly uh, if we want to lighten it again. But generally the torching helps, uh, you know, bring out the carving, engraving, etching. So we're just gonna uh, touch it up a little bit uh, to bring out the contrast for the darker areas. So we've got a, a mix of uh, beeswax and oil that we usually use for this. Uh, if you guys are interested, this is actually the same uh, wax and oil mix I use for, um, I guess, protecting the blades. Okay. So, on to scabbard making. So, I mean, we, we've kind of... Uh, had a previous video making a scabbard for the cat's balga. Um, very similar process. Uh, not much else to say about this. Uh, just documenting this in case any interesting new things come up. But I think this one's pretty cut and dried. So again, you want to mark out all the um, you know areas that you want to cut out the piece of wood for and get the measurements in. So again, uh, I don't have um, a saw or anything, so we're mostly just going to dremel our way through this. Got to make sure you have uh, space at the end for the tip of the scabbard. Almost forgot about that. That would have been bad. <laughs> so yeah, we're just going to get the loose shapes in first. You know, maybe I should actually buy a small table saw or something. Uh, if you all have recommendations, uh, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments. Because, um, yeah, working on this with a Dremel, whilst possible, um, could be easy. I'll definitely say that. But yeah, um, again, documenting process letting uh, folks who are living, for example, in the city, like myself, uh, that it's possible to kind of do this uh, with literally just a drummer. Yeah, cool figure, right? You don't sometimes need a whole lumber yard to make something simple. So again, we're just gonna cut through on the other side uh, and we're gonna, I guess, get the break. Or was it a clean cut? Depends how much work you wanna do. But yeah, it's definitely fine enough to work with.
Okay, so one half is done. We're just gonna work on the other half real quick. Again, I think generally we are erring on uh, the side of more rather than less. Uh, if you have any excess wood, again, it can be sanded or trimmed off. If you have too little, there is literally nothing you can do about that. Yeah, I guess you guys can, can skip forward a little bit. Um, not sinking the blade in all the way in case it gets stuck. Stuff like that. I probably really should get a saw one day. Okay, so we've got our little wood slats again from Daiso. All the woods from Daiso is cheap and good, uh, at least for these purposes. Uh, you can see that the, I mean, you just got to get the slats in. If you look at the screen, you can see the scabbard's not exactly um, entirely symmetrical, but I think that's okay, at least for this one. Uh, we are waxing the inside a bit, making sure the blade fits. Um, again, making sure the blade can slide in and out, not too loose. Uh, there was a little bit of um, grinding in between that's not on camera, uh, and then waxing again. Uh, but, you know. So, again, there's no easy way for this one. It's a lot of back and forth. Apply your glue, get your clamps on. In this case, you know, clothes, pegs. And once uh, your scabbards uh, more or less stuck together and assembled, there was a bunch of sanding to get the overall shape, um, you know, smoothed out. Up, just brushing off some of the sawdust, um, slowly sanding the scabbard into into shape. Uh, be careful not to sand off too much. If not, you're gonna have to start over from scratch. Again, I'm wondering about better equipment at some point in time. But hey, just to let you folks know that yep, you can do this with a Dremel. Um, just um, carving some notches in uh, for, for a grip. And we're gonna 
torch the outside again. Not too much, so I think just be, be a little bit careful about this. Okay, and uh, so remember the patterns on the handle. Uh, we're just gonna add them here to the scabbard to, I guess, unify the two pieces, aesthetically at least. Uh, we're not gonna do this for the whole scabbard. Um, I'm not that patient. <laughs> Uh, so we're just gonna do it for the upper portion, um, you know, working in some of the patterns where appropriate. So we're trying to fill it up, uh, but not all the way, uh, just enough. Okay, and now for the other side. So what we're going to do after uh, we've got these patterns in is we're going to wax down the scabbard as well uh, on the outside. This helps uh, protect it and uh, helps seal the wood as well. Okay, so uh, we've waxed it down, uh, we've got the sword fitted in and this is more or less what it looks like. Sorry, the work table's still uh, pretty messy but yeah. Let's have a look at some pictures of what we've managed to do. So I hope uh, you know this was at least uh, somewhat useful. Again, I made some mistakes. Hopefully you all can learn from my mistakes. Uh, this isn't the best build at all, but this was a learning experience for me as well. Uh, thank you so much, and I hope this uh, you know was uh, useful for you. Thanks.